This is an experiment. What do billionaires, cultural icons, and world-class athletes have in common? I'm about to find out. I'm John Aguilar, serial entrepreneur, former decathlete, and creator and host of the CNN Philippines business reality show, The Final Pitch. Each week, I try to unlock the secrets of Asia's world-class performers to come up with hacks that I can apply in my own life. My goal is to have you apply them in yours. This is the podcast designed to change your life. This is Methods to Greatness. Our guest for today is one of America's leading millennial influencers, a LinkedIn-rated top 20 millennial marketing and brand strategist, a sought-after keynote speaker, Forbes contributor, and the millennial talk chat host whose influence shapes marketing strategies of not only small businesses, but Fortune 500 corporations. Chelsea's LinkedIn learning course, Learning Personal Branding, ranked number 12 globally on the top performing course list 2020. She offers live one-on-one coaching and DIY programs to entrepreneurs and businesses of all sizes. Chelsea specializes in those who are looking to gain a deeper understanding of millennial and Gen Z mindset, zero in on what to do on social media, explain how to use influencer marketing, streamline digital marketing strategies, and reveal how to build loyal and engaged online communities. Chelsea sat on the board of Cosmopolitan Magazine as a millennial board member and has been a brand ambassador for many notable and diverse brands such as Intel, MasterCard, IBM, Suave, and Skype to name a few. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy my interview with Chelsea Crossed. Greetings to our listeners from the Philippines, Asia, and beyond. I guess let me fire the first question by asking, in terms of personal branding, so for example, any person, a professional, an entrepreneur, who has been doing what they're doing for quite a while, obviously needs to establish the right personal brand. What, in your opinion, Chelsea, would, I guess, make it something that they can really develop into something that would be apt for their objectives, which is, if you're an entrepreneur or a startup, something that would allow people to, I guess, trust you and, and, and believe in your brand? Yeah, well, you know what? That is the golden question, you know? And I absolutely love the conversation of personal branding because personal, I think, you know, even just several years ago, when someone heard the word or the term personal branding, people said, oh, you know what? I'm not an influencer. I'm not a business owner. I'm not an entrepreneur. I might be more of a student, intern, employee, um, maybe in transition, right? I'm just looking for my next, I'm a job seeker. I'm a freelancer. I don't need to have a personal brand. Well, that is not the case in the year 2021. It really wasn't the case that even I like to say within the past five years, last 10 years, those who have been building their personal brand over the past decade are the names we know today. You don't grow overnight success when you decide today, I'm going to start building my personal brand. I really like to say personal branding is the extension of your personal and professional self. It is both your personal identity and professional identity that is what people talk about when you're in the room or when you've left the room already. It's what people say about you when talking about you and you have the opportunity today to define what those people are saying. And if you don't take the the opportunity to define your personal brand, people will make it up for you, right? So I like to say you might as well define your personal brand before or somebody else does it for you. And if you're not do, if you're not taking personal branding seriously, the competition is. So the competition could be the, the fellow business owner, the fellow business, the, the fellow job seeker, the intern looking for the next internship opportunity. I really like to make it clear from you know entry level in the job force to the C level executive we benefit from establishing a personal brand today and for personal branding for uh, entrepreneurs thought leaders bloggers creators business owners right I do believe that there are key essentials to take into consideration when wanting to build your personal brand. Would you like me to rattle off those kind of yes, simple? Please. Yes, please. 
So I call this the six building blocks of building an effective personal brand foundation. Now, why do I say personal brand foundation? Because I like to have, use this analogy. Think about when you're building a home or when you're building a business building, right? Commercial, residential. The first thing you do is you start by that solid slab of concrete, right? You have to build a foundation. You're not going to start building the home on top of that wet, unleveled concrete because the home will not be level. The home will not be solid. The home will not last through a hurricane, right? You want that house to be something that you can build and build and build. And like the person, the more solid your foundation is, the bigger mega mansion you can build on top of that foundation. So here's the six personal branding blocks I like to really focus on. These personal branding blocks are something that I would get up and talk to um, C-level executives, right, at, at a, a huge conference. I would talk to intern students looking to submit for their, you know, resume and their first job. I would also talk to entrepreneurs who were service-based entrepreneurs, for example, people who are designers, chefs, therapists, coaches, right? I really believe that all of this information does apply to the latter. So building block number one, personal brand foundation. That is really having a conversation with yourself. What am I passionate about? What is my purpose? What experience do I have under my belt? What is my expertise? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What are my core beliefs? What is the message I stand by? What type of voice do I have authentically and want to continue to brand online? Do I have a logo? What color story, you know, is appealing to me? To me, all of those things that I just rattled off, building block number one, personal brand foundation. Building block number two, identifying your target audience. Who is your target audience? Where are they online? What do those people value? And what are their needs and pain points? When you can identify your target audience, for example, my target audience are female entrepreneurs. My target audience is men in their 50s and 60s, probably on the brink of retirement. My target audience is those who already have retired. My target audience is Gen Z college students. The more niche you can solidify your target audience, you can really understand who they are, where they are online. For example, we have a lot of social media channels available to us today. TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Etsy, um, um, Instagram, right? Where are they online? What do they value? What are they sharing? What are they looking for? What are their needs? What are their pain points? All of this information is so essential to understanding how to position yourself as the expert, the thought leader, the content creator, or this or the service offering or the product, right, to that target audience. Your next third building block is your brand story. Now, for those who are the art and science of the pitch, right, your brand story is really the, the um, bigger version of your elevator pitch, right? Your elevator pitch kind of has to be that short, punchy, effective uh, marketing message on behalf of yourself, your, your business, your product, right? Your brand story could be a little bit larger, a little bit longer, um, but your brand story is why people will connect with you, resonate with you, or not connect with you and resonate with you. You know, when I mentioned the name Elon Musk, Gary Vaynerchuk, Martha Stewart, Oprah Winfrey, Obama, right? Barack Obama. Uh, you know the story, the, the experience, the credibility behind these people with just me saying their name, right? The brand story is sharing who you are with established credibility, why you do what you do, how your experience has made you the best person to get this done. 
I also believe that one of the most important elements in your brand story for those who are building, you know, their reputation, their credibility, and that really, this number one piece to the brand story that I don't think people talk about enough is that breakdown that you've had that gave you that breakthrough that led you on the current journey that you're on today. That's the golden secret, the secret sauce, the key ingredient to a brand story, even sometimes a pitch when you can, when it's really a breakdown. For example, I got into a car accident. I was debilitated for one year. And because of not being able to move for one year, I thought of this product that I want to help everybody, you know, who, you know, is in a wheelchair for the rest of their life right? That breakdown for breakthrough. Now that was an extreme example, of course. You know, my breakdown, for example, was I lost my grandfather and my business in 2016 within 48 hours. And my business owner uh, stole from me and cheated, you know, on the business. And I was grieving a personal loss and a business loss. And I realized that my personal brand, I had kept going throughout the entire journey of building this business. And I had my personal brand to fall back on. And that's when I realized that not one day went by that I didn't ge generate revenue, generate more followers, generate more opportunity, and how essential it was to have a personal brand in any venture that you did. And since 2016, I haven't looked back and it's been personal branding, personal branding, and so much opportunity, growth, and experience in helping other entrepreneurs do it themselves after a business or personal breakdown. So it's what is that breakdown that resonates with that target audience that you can, is part of your brand story. Is all of that making sense so far? Yes. Yes. So much sense. One of the biggest trends in fitness right now is the proliferation of home gyms. And we've partnered with Italian wellness solutions provider Techno Gym to give you your weekly dose of high-tech fitness equipment and exercises that you can consider for your home. Joining me is Techno Gym Philippines Sales Director Marvin Navarro. Okay, John, so this is the MyRun. This is the Techno Gym treadmill specifically designed for the home. It's very compact. Even though it has a very small footprint, the running surface to body ratio is very, very good. One of the best in the market. But what sets this apart to normal treadmills is this actually helps you become a better runner through a dedicated application. We have the normal slew of exercises, goal training, workout, fat loss. So what you find in normal treadmills. But what we have here is actually a program that will help you become a better runner. So let's say you want to be able to run a half marathon. Then it will ask you right now, what is the distance that you can cover right now? So let's say right now I can do five kilometers. And how long can you run that five kilometers? Let's say I'm relatively a beginner and I can do it in around 40 minutes. How many times you want to train a week? I'm dedicated, I'll train four times a week. And there you can see, it will already give you your training protocol, a schedule that you can follow all throughout the week. Once you assign this, it will then sync to your calendar so that you will never miss a workout. So you can see this treadmill can actually detect your cadence, your step or stride length, and also your displacement, how much you're bouncing up and down. With this, you can actually fine-tune your running technique to become better and more efficient at running. Another feature is run with your music, wherein if you have songs loaded into your tablet computer, it actually picks the songs with the same beat of your pace. Nice. So this is the dedicated Techno Gym application for my run. But if you are using any of the popular third-party applications, you can actually use it and sync it with this treadmill as well. Swift has connected with the MyRun, and then now you can use it with the application. You can start a run, and then there you go. Aside from giving you the usual speed, distance, time, it actually gives you your stride length so you can calculate exactly how much or how long your stride should be. It gives you your displacement so as much as possible you don't bounce 
And this, I find, is something that's very unique and first time I've ever gotten to experience this. It's like having a coach by your side telling you exactly how you should run. So as a runner myself, I think this is invaluable feedback. I'm very, very surprised we already have the technology for this right now. I forget who exactly you said it. Uh, it was in a podcast that I listened to recently, but you said that I think it, what resonates with me is that your identity or at least that breakdown and your recovery from that breakdown, it's, it sort of creates a persona or, or a recovery story or, or, or break yes, story. Come back that, story. Mm -hmm. that, that, that my, my, my question also being, is it healthy to associate future endeavors with that particular breakthrough story or is it something that you can veer away from what if you all of a sudden come up with a new idea that is not necessarily related to that breakthrough story or are you not being authentic if you do not oh, stick that, with that? that is such a great question and I'm so happy you asked that question because this is something I actually spent a lot of time with my uh, coaching clients on and, and and speaking engagements and workshops right people really get confused and they get stuck on what is my brand story? I, I have so many stories, right? Well, of course, throughout our lifetime, we are a compilation of highs and lows, right? Life is tough. Life is full of uh, beautiful successes and beautiful challenges, right? And I like to say your brand story for your professional self, right? For your personal brand identity, it should be a story or something that happened to your within your lifetime that of course applies to your professional personal brand, right? So I can think of plenty of stories that have happened in my 30 years, right? 30 years on this planet. I got more than one story to share. There, okay. <laughs> so it's the story, the experience, the hardship or the success or the success, right? That applies to your current goal, your current mission, where you want to go next, right? So if I picked a story out of my 30 year bank that had no application, right? To my entrepreneurs that were wanting to build their online business, it wouldn't be relevant to that person. But the entrepreneurs who are building an online business want to hear a story that connects to the struggles, the hardship it is to create an online business today and how I created success on my own that I've learned from, that I could help people apply it to their life, their business. The story that you think should be something that resonates with your target audience and the learning lessons, the learning lessons, the takeaways from the story that you have can apply to their current situation. The people that get, if she did it, I could do it. If she experienced it, I could experience it. Chelsea knows what I'm going through. Chelsea overcame what I'm going through. Chelsea has the information for me. That should be that is the goal of picking your story. Um, and, and here's the thing, as we evolve in our careers, right? Because you are not the same person you are today that you are going to be in 2031. You're, you're not. And if you are, then you're not growing enough, right? right? So here's an example. I started my career when I was 16 years old. I started my first radio talk show. I was a producer and host of, of the first radio talk show in America, hosted by, produced by uh, a teenager for teenagers. The word millennial did not yet exist. And this was back in 2007. And my, my story, part of my pitch in 2007 was I'm a living, breathing, walking, talking teenager right now in 2007, that's craving connection, craving communication, craving more content than the Disney channel, MTV, because social media was at its infancy. No, there was no such thing as influencers, you know, what we think of social media, YouTube today. 
say it was really my space in 2007. Facebook, you had to have a college edu, you know, address to, to participate on Facebook. So I was craving connection. I was craving communication. I was craving larger conversations with people all over the world, different than me, like me. I wanted to learn about my body. I wanted to talk about relationships. I wanted to talk about dating. I wanted to talk about college. And I couldn't find that. I identified a hole, a need in in content, right? So as a living, breathing, walking, talking teenager, I was also hearing all of this information out there of how horrible teenagers were. We were the demise of the planet. We were entitled, we're lazy, narcissistic. I kept hearing all this negative language about my peers. And I wanted to write that wrong. I said, hey, I'm a teenager. I'm looking at all of my peers and we're studying so hard for our ACTs and SATs. We are so um, passionate about getting into a good college. We are hungry for success. This is not the representation that I think we deserve slash we need to get a different message out there to empower the millennials, not belittle the millennials. So that was my pitch when I created Teen Talk Live my, for my radio show. And I identified the hole, I identified the need, I identified my target audience, I had a clear why I thought this show was important, and three months later was the first Teen Talk Live episode, and Teen Talk Live was truly the catalyst to now my 15-year career and brand, and, and, and that brand, became I became the millennial girl the go-to millennial girl, go-to millennial expert, because I really was, I, look, I walked the walk and talked the talk. I was a millennial. I understood all things millennial because I was living and breathing it. And I was also studying patterns and behaviors and talking and researching and polling and crowdsourcing teenagers on a weekly basis throughout, throughout my radio show. So that was my story 10 years, you know, 15 years ago. And of course, my story has only uh, evolved over the past 15 years to what it is today. Right now, I'm a female uh, business owner. I'm a mother of a four-week-old. I understand what it means to work smarter, not harder, because as a mother, there's the art of multitasking <laughs> is essential. Um, and, and building a service-based business from uh, online is absolutely the reason why I'm a seven-figure success today right? So I love helping people do it for themselves. So again, I know it's a very long-winded, uh, but very important element to why brand story really allows for you to connect with the right audience. Because once that story connects, you're not selling anymore. You're not selling anymore. And for the art and science of the pitch, your pitch is the story not necessarily the pitch. So I'd love to even throw that word pitch out the window, right? We have to still use it because it's, it's, it's a professional marketing essential, right? Everybody needs to know what their pitch is. But when you peel back the pitch, right? If you think of the pitch as the onion, right? If you peel back the pitch at the core of that onion, at the core of that pitch is the story. And does that story connect with your audience? Does that story connect with the, with the television um, you know, uh, audience? Does your, does your story connect with the investor, right? When you work, watch Shark Tank, when you watch any show where someone is pitching themselves, don't watch the person pitching, watch the judges, watch the investors, because you'll start to see their facial expressions change or start to, the, or you'll see them tap out, right? You, you lost them because the story is not connecting or all of a sudden they're, they start leaning in, their facial expressions start to soften, they start nodding their head, they start to smile because the, co the content that they're sharing, the story that they're sharing is resonating. And then you've hooked the fish. Now you just got to reel it in. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so there's That's three. Yeah, that that there's surprises three. a lot of what um, you'll, you'll read in the book. Actually. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure all of this is, is, is so, uh, you know, relevant to so much of the content you have. And then there's three more building blocks. I'll kind of just go over those uh, quickly. I can even send you a graphic if that helps. I have. Sure, yes, 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 and, yes. Then, and then that kind of will be like a synopsis, if you will. Um, 
So building block number four is to package your expertise and define it, right? So for those who are service-based entrepreneurs, right? So those who are selling a product online, selling a service online like myself, right? Defining that service type. Is it a product? Is it a service? What's the format of that service, right? Now we're doing so much remote business, okay? So is it like one-on-one -on -one coaching? Is it group coaching? Is it a buy now product? I mail it to your home. Is it a webinar? Is it a do-it-yourself program? You know, what is the description, the benefits, the deliverables, the cost? All essential to your overall personal brand, right? When people go, oh, Chelsea, she's the millennial expert. She helps service-based entrepreneurs. She helps you get, she helps you refine your packages to sell online, right? Boom. What do I do? Package that expertise and define it. Very essential. Packaging your expertise could also be, um, you know, if you're applying to the job, how are you packaging your expertise in your resume? How are you packaging your expertise on your website, on your LinkedIn page? All applies to how am I going to package my extra expertise and define it for the public information, public knowledge. Building block number five, so essential, establishing thought leadership. Right. How do I continue to establish thought leadership online? How do I build that SEO right recognition online? So when someone types in personal branding expert, Chelsea Cross pops up or uh, personal branding, uh, physical therapist, uh, you know, even OBGYN, you know, from doctors to lawyers to coaches to chefs. I mean, every we all have personal brand and branding, um, you know, at, leadership. And there's nothing more important than bringing a person to the forefront of a, of a bigger business entity, right? So when we think of, when we did think of Amazon, we thought of Jeff Bezos, right? When we think of Tesla, we think of Elon Musk. When we think of daytime television, you think of Oprah Winfrey, Ellen DeGeneres, right? So the faces behind companies' brands are so essential for building thought leadership. Publish keyword articles, great way to build thought leadership. Um, publish articles on a blog, a website, or LinkedIn. Host topical live streams or webinars. Public speaking engagements, virtual events, collaborating with industry experts and influencers all great ways to establish more thought leadership, more SEO for, for your um, name recognition, name recognition. And then last but not least, building block number six is of course social media and community growth. And you have to be consistent in your branding and messaging across all channels on social media, right? You can't be one thing on Twitter and, and a different thing on LinkedIn. It has to be consistent. It has to be clear. Uh, you have to post and engage daily. Use hashtags wisely. Provide value in your content. Provide value, value, value in your content. Create content that speaks to that target audience, right? And track the progress across your social channels. Tracking your analytics will absolutely help to reveal what's working or what's not working and who, right? We can really understand um, demographics, female or male, age, uh, location. All of this can really help you refine your content marketing strategy to better appeal to that target audience. And truly, those are the six building blocks that if you can take those six building blocks into, you know, um, key consideration, you are on your way to building an effective personal brand. That's great, Chelsea. You know, uh, getting into social media, I'd like to find out, you said consistency is key, but given that these different platforms have different audiences. Uh, someone on TikTok maybe would not respond to the same messaging as someone yeah. that's on LinkedIn. So how do you differentiate while keeping to your story the kind of content that you can, I guess, produce across different platforms? Uh, being Great. authentic to your, to your core, but at the same time trying to appeal to different market demographics. So two part answer for you on that one. First, yes, you are right. Target um, one 
every social media channel does have its own ethos, its own, its own brand, if you will, right? Every social media channel does have its own brand in regards to the type of audience that is drawn to that, to that platform, type of content that's most popular on that platform, and the, the, um, type of content that's most valued on that platform. So for example, LinkedIn is going to be of the most professional job seeker like platform, right? You are a, a, a more of a serious professional, right? When you take your content to LinkedIn, um, establishing thought leadership, establishing credibility, generating more recommendations, testimonials on your profile. You could be the business owner, or the job seeker, but your, you know, your main goal is to professional growth on LinkedIn. Then when you think about TikTok, you might think more about those slapstick funny videos, more of the entertainment, right? So I would call LinkedIn more info entertainment, informational yet entertaining, right? Where I put TikTok more in the entertainment category, right? You're not going to TikTok to learn about your, your finances or legal matters or necessarily to find your next job. Doesn't mean that you can't find great influencers and content creators in the finance category or in the legal space, right? But when you think about the platform, you think about where you're more likely to get credible quality information that you're looking for, you know, finances, legal matters, um, you know, uh, parenting, you might see more humorous, sarcastic, slapstick, funny, entertaining content on TikTok, more professional quality, more, more, more um, you know, uh, blazer focused versus, you know, tank tops and crop tops and, and ripped jeans on TikTok, right? It's just a different type of audience, different type of behavior, different, different type of content needs. So here's the thing. You have to understand the demographics across every social media channel, right? And I do not believe that every person today needs to be on every channel. I don't. Why do I say that? Because there are too many channels for you to be your best on every channel. And you don't have to be your best on every channel, especially because every channel is a bit different, right? So here's my take on this. Every person who is interested in professional growth should have a LinkedIn presence. LinkedIn today is your living, breathing, real-time resume anytime I can go onto LinkedIn and type in Chelsea Cross and find my profile, my credibility, my thought leadership, co my content, my LinkedIn courses on LinkedIn, right? At any time, someone can see my resume. If you don't have a website, if you don't have a blog, if you don't have a landing page, your LinkedIn profile acts as that for everybody today. So I believe everybody who is in interested in professional growth and of course, personal branding should have a LinkedIn profile. Then pick your top three channels of where your target audience is most primarily. So for me, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, and that's Facebook. So Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn are the channels that I am most passionate and most consistent about creating content for. Now, if you go to all of those channels, you will see that I am branded the same. Yet, on Instagram, because it's a little bit more personalized, it's a little bit more for the creator than, you know, the entrepreneur, let, you know, let's, uh, than, than the business, um, the corporate, I would say. It's a little bit more for the creator, a little less more for corporate, right? LinkedIn, more for corporate. Even Twitter, to me, it's like a little bit more of a 50-50 corporate creator um, blend. So I am my most personal on Instagram. You get to know most about my family life, my personal life, my, you know, the personal Chelsea and more of the professional Chelsea on, on LinkedIn. So I can give my audience a little bit more of a taste of me depending on the behaviors 
and of the social media channel. And that's understanding the demographics, the mindset, your audience on that channel. You can give a little bit more of you and a little bit different of you across channel. But of course, all where it makes sense, all where it's still within the umbrella of who, who I am, who, what, what I stand for, my message, my beliefs, my voice, my expertise, my family life. And you can choo- pick and choose to where you share a little bit more, a little bit less, right? People always want to know how much is too much sharing, right? Especially when you're thinking about personal brand building. I don't think anyone can tell you how much too much is. That's something personal that you have to decide, right? That that feels good for you. I don't, for example, some people never want to share about their children. That is okay. That is totally okay. Some people might want to share about, that's great. You know, I don't want to talk, I don't want to post a family vacation photo, no problem. I do want to post it. Okay. That's some, you have to find that happy medium, right? For me, being that I work with entrepreneurs, being that I work with thought leaders, bloggers, creators that want to have this family life, but successful business, it makes sense for me to share about my family life because I am showing and walking the walk and talking the talk that yes, you can have a family, you can be married, you can be a homeowner, you can work from home and build a six figure online business yourself, right? People want to see it, to believe it. So if that personal part of you makes sense in your story or to your target audience, that's a great indicator of, of course, that makes sense for you to share, right? Maybe you're a, a lawyer, but you love to cook. You just, it's a passion of yours. So of course, share recipes and cook when you get home, you know, finish, just finished a contract and can't wait to get into the kitchen. You know, someone in the professional field, in illegal or someone looking for, might connect on your passion for cooking, right? That's why the number one building block is personal brand foundation and what your passions are, beliefs are, message is, expertise. Expertise can be personal and professional expertise, right? So uh, one of my expertise is yoga. I am a, a, a great yogi. I've been doing yoga for 15 years and my expertise in yoga, in finding my center, in in, in frazzled moments, getting still, finding my core does help me be, be a stronger entrepreneur. So I take a lot of my yoga foundations when I'm actually training my coaching clients. If I start to see them getting frazzled or too many, okay, we'll start doing some breathing exercises. We'll start doing some chair yoga. So it's really how you could thread your expertise together that makes you uniquely you. So that you, all of your your strengths, all of your areas of expertise, personal and professionally, get tied into this wonderful professional personal brand that you can share online with others and offline with others. It's really about looking at you as a whole package. Don't just look at yourself as, I am just a lawyer. I am just a producer. I am just a nurse, right? You're more than that. You're professionally you, you're personally you, and all of that is encompassed in your in your personal brand. Should get encompassed in your personal brand today. Wow, thank you. Thank you for that. And, you know, Chelsea, there's this thought that we're trying to explore. On one hand, you have your elevator pitch, right? On the other yeah. hand, you're trying to explore this idea that your pitch actually is a long game. It, it's actually something that you create over the long term. In this case, your brand or your, your personal story. It's something that when an investor looks at you, I mean, apart from your pitch, the investor is looking at you in terms of what you've done historically in your life, in your career, maybe even your family. So um, we're trying to explore that thought of the pitch actually being a culmination of things that you've done yes. in your life that has led you to that point wherein a possible investor can go, you know, Throughout your life, you've been successful or not, or maybe you failed and now, and, and, and you've seen in this person's life that this person has always gotten up uh, from failures and, and has done tremendously well. 
so that's that's a thought that we we we'd like to also get your thoughts on. I mean, what do you feel would be a great way to be able to show this, whether it's on social media or whether it's in your actual pitch? Well, I think investor. Yes. Well, I think John, that really goes back to like the building block number three, right? Um, solidifying, creating that brand story. That brand story is part of your pitch. It's an element in your pitch, right? Because I do believe that that brand story pitch moment is what will connect with the investor or not, right? And it's about it's a culmination of the experience you've lived and and at, lived, right? That has brought you to this point today that has shaped you for this moment, that has given you the reason, the cause, the experience to create what you've created now, right? That you're pitching. So that brand story, that story has to be created from some something that's happened to you in your life, right? And that, and again, that's why I say, you know, in your in in in, in your lifetime, you have many stories, but the story that you have to carve out and shape and kind of tie together, if you will, for the pitch has to be the story that's relevant to your pitch, relevant to your business, relevant to your, um, you you know, to your cause, right? And that could have been a breakdown moment, you know, uh, where you failed and why you failed and what you learned from that failure that gave you the strength, the know-how, the credibility to try it this way that worked. And that's why you're here for that pitch to get investment, to get on a bigger scale, right? So I do believe that the pitch is a story. And if it feels like a pitch, like you're coming at it from more of a methodical approach, right? Numbers and statistics and facts and surveys, you are going to lose the interest from the investor. But if you come to the table with credible information, right? Know how about the demographics, know how about the uh, the target market you're trying to appeal to, understanding the pain points, the need, the hole that you're filling with your solution, right? You are the solution that you are bringing to the table, right? So you have to make them think that, you have to make the investor think that you are the answer. You are the solution. You are the person that's going to solve my problem or your product is going to solve my problem, right? And the way you let them know, the way you share about your solution, the way you share about your product is through the storytelling. So it's really how you're weaving your story into your pitch that's going to make the investor one, get to know you, get to understand why you're passionate behind this cause, get to know why you're the person to drive it to the finish line. And it's going to be the reason why they believe in you to get it done, right? So it's such a, that's why it really is the art and science of the pitch. And art and science are two totally different words, right? Art, you think of creativity, inspiration, whimsical, storytelling, science, more calculated, formulated, methodical, two plus two equals four. Any way you shape it, right? Two plus two equals four. So it's really a combination of art and science, right? Art it is the story. Science is the identifying the audience, knowing the target audience, knowing what the pain points are, knowing what the needs is, knowing the market research, right? Doing the research to make your story more powerful uh, for when you're delivering it to the investor. Does, does that make sense? Does that, yeah, does that help? It totally makes sense. Yes. It, it it's also, really a combination. Sorry, if I might add as well, and, and after this, um, maybe Anel can ask her question, but so we've been talking about your personal brand. Uh, in terms of the corporate brand, how important is your, let's say your startup or your company's brand in um, getting it out there as well? Oh, absolutely just as important. So we're talking a lot about the personal brand identity, right? But just as important it is today to think about the overall brand reputation, overall brand identity, right? So when you think about Elon Musk, 
you think about Tesla. But when you think, but also when you hear Tesla, you you think of Elon Musk. And both brands, right, personal brand feeds the corporate Tesla bigger brand and vice versa, right? That's why it's very powerful to have a face behind a corporate brand. When you think, when you thought of Amazon, you thought of Jeff Bezos, uh, right? I think of Apple, Microsoft, right? You think Bill Gates. So it's very powerful to have a face behind a brand. But it also is essential to have powerful brand reputation, right? And that's why a lot of corporations today are aligning themselves with powerful influencers to bring more of personality, personal brand identity to within their cor- corporation, right? It's giving it more of a humanized, human feel. We are craving today's society human connection. We don't want to... F- you know, it's like amazing. It's it's a it's kind of a a parallel universe if you think about it. So we've never been more remote. We've never been more technologically savvy, and also we've also never had as as little human connection just within the past COVID year, right? But at the same time, that this that all this technology is making us crave more human connection and trust. Trust, 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 right? Because there's so much information bombarding us every day. There's so much advertising. There's so much spam marketing. We are seeking out the people that we trust to make us feel confident in the product or or the company behind them, right? So even, you know, if you're a food network um, watcher here in the United States, they have all of these incredible chefs like Bobby Flay, Alex Bornicelli, right, who are representing different food brands or uh, kitchen products. And the, the chef, the chef is the human, right, identifying themselves with the product or the brand, making the consumer feel more confident in purchasing that product purchasing from that brand, right? So brands today, companies today, corporations today who are aligning themselves with the right influencer. And when I say influencer, I'm talking celebrity, thought leader, content creator that that has the expertise, the know-how to align themselves with that, with that company and also speaks to and appeals to the target audience. Right. Because if, if the, the, the right corporation aligns themselves with the right influencer, it's a wonderful marriage between consumer, influencer and corporation. Right. And it makes the human element more authentic, more engaging. It really helps to build thought leadership. Um, but brand reputation, especially in the year 2021, After all that we've experienced throughout the COVID era, in the news, the lack of trust, you know, we have as a society today is truly a make or break for companies today, right? I I have a quote that that I say, you know, companies don't control their brand reputation anymore, consumers do. Could, because we can, you know, consumers online, consumers on social media can make or break your brand reputation with positive or negative reviews, right? It could be a sabotage moment if, if a customer service issue goes wrong and all those negative reviews start flying off on, on social media. Think of how many things have gone trending on Twitter that was negative for a specific brand, right? Or a company or corporation. So you always want, you know, positive brand reputation, positive brand recognition, consistently aligning yourselves with the right thought leaders within your industry, quality, quality content, right? That you're sharing value to your audience, practicing what you preach as a corporation, right? For the missions and values you stand by, for the give back, um, initiatives you you practice every year, your corporate social responsibility, right? This is essential to brand management today. And actually interesting that you asked more about the brand management question, John, because my next LinkedIn course is all about um, brand reputation and creating and sustaining positive brand reputation, a little bit more company corporate 
you know, focused where person, my personal branding course online is of course, more for the entrepreneur, the thought leader, the blogger, the creator, um, but brand reputation, of course, you think a little bit more of the, the overall corporation and company, um, just as important, just as essential. Um, but I do think that the human personal brand only strengthens the corporate personal brand today. Fantastic. So here's my biggest piece of advice when you're in startup mode, startup life for startups. While we should be considering the, the, the startup company's brand aesthetic, right? What does the brand look like? What does the brand sound like? What is the, what is the brand's purpose? What is the brand's product or service? What is the brand's target audience, right? What makes the, what makes the, the product or, or service unique? While all of that is, of course, 100% essential, in startup mode, you're at the foundation, right? So that's where those six personal branding blocks that we've talked about are something that should be considered for every startup. And especially startup mode, you're at its infancy to, to really establish all of that right now, right? Because what a lot of people do is they've been working for 10 years, and now they need to take personal branding into consideration and they kind of have to like backtrack to create this brand that maybe was hodgepodge or is changing. So when you're in startup life, you have all the time now to create that, that solid brand foundation to layer on top of, right? Kind of that house analogy that I used earlier in our conversation. So all of the personal branding building blocks should be thought out for every startup phase. Personal brand foundation, identifying your target audience, for, of course, brand aesthetic. What is the startup's brand story? What is their brand story? How is the startup defining its expertise, right? Why that service offering is a needed, essential, the solution, right? Why is that startup the solution? How is that startup establishing thought leadership and establishing thought leadership as a startup is how are we generating SEO value, right? Search engine optimization behind the company itself, right? So at one point, Spotify was a startup. At one point, Uber was a startup. At one point, Zoom was a startup, right? But they were building their, their, their credibility, their thought leadership with content that they were creating and sharing online so that they were getting it in front of the of the ideal target audience right i always like to say startups should show and tell show and tell their target audience how to use their product why they to use their product how their product is the solution to their target audience's needs and pain points show and tell there is so many different types of content formats out there today there's blog posts there's vlog posts there's video, there's micro video, there's GIFs, there's slideshows, there's live streams, there's webinars, there's DIY video trainings, there's infographics, there's quotes, there's explainer videos, there's how-to videos, there's testimonial videos, there's testimonials, right? I can go on and on and on with the different types of content that all personal brands and company brands and startups could evaluate what's the best type of content to create that's going to showcase our awesomeness, right? That's going to showcase our expertise, our product, our service, our solution, the outcome, right? The outcome, what, you know, it, maybe it is a TikTok video, maybe it's a GIF, Maybe it's an explainer video. Maybe it's a true how-to tutorial. Maybe it's a live stream. Maybe it has to be a more tutorial webinar, right? We have to think about the content format that's going to best deliver the show and tell experience. And then it's social media, right? What channels we're going to participate on to, to show and tell on those social media channels. So that's how every startup should be thinking today, right? Okay, building my personal brand foundation, really getting clear on the brand story behind the startup, 
defining why this startup is filling that need, that solution to the target audience that isn't already out there, how you're doing it differently. Every startup today should think about the person that they are bringing to the forefront. Is it, is it the CEO? Is it the creator? Or is it someone that they're aligning themselves with? Is it an influencer? Is it a celebrity? Is it, is it, is it an expert, right? Who has also built a personal brand, who has also built a social media following that they can tap into their audience, right? Like think about Uber, right? Ashton Kutcher was one of the first investors in Uber. Ashton Kutcher was one of the first investors in Twitter. And he was using Uber. He was using Twitter. He was advocating on behalf of these startups. It was bringing more credibility, thought leadership, brand awareness to these startups. Now I realize Ashton Kutcher is a huge A-list celebrity. So you could start with more micro influencers, right? Someone who maybe has even 5,000 followers, but they have an engaged online community. And I do want to make it a point, you know, that when we think about building a personal brand or aligning ourselves with influencers today, Sometimes we go immediately to the Ashton Kutcher's, the Jeff Bezos, the Kim Kardashians, right? They're the easy influencers to think about and talk about, but there are so many wonderful micro influencers who have the 5,000 followers who have a, you know, a, a blog in, in DIY and in home design in fashion in finance and fitness that have maybe a smaller community, but a smaller engaged community. And you know that from the amount of comments and likes um, that they're getting online. You know, this is all public information that we could see, how many testimonials, recommendations these people have on LinkedIn. Um, and you can start with micro-influencers, even a, 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 a pod of micro-influencers, maybe three, five micro-influencers, and it will be so much more cost-effective than trying to, you know, align yourself with a, with an Ashton Kutcher of the world, right? And micro-influencers can be just as effective as the Ashton Kutchers, because Ashton Kutcher's millions and millions of followers, think of how diverse all those people, right? Millions and millions of people versus 5,000 people who are a little bit more refined, uh, more specialized community, it could be just as effective in working with, you know, a select handful of micro influencers as one mega influencer. So that's something we should all think about from the, especially the startup phase, right? You're always thinking budget, and you're always thinking, how am I going to start brand awareness publicity, right? Um, look for a great pod of micro influencers that are speaking and sharing and storytelling and using your service and product on, on their behalf and sharing it across their channels, sharing it with their community. Great way to use influencer marketing, startup life, right? And startup mode. Um, and then if there is that, that key individual within the startup that already has that expertise, thought leadership, wants to be the person at the forefront, right? Wants to be the Jeff Bezos of Amazon, wants to be, you know, the Elon Musk of Tesla, then that person, the CEO, the, the VP, the, maybe the content director, the marketing director, they need to consistently be building their presence through their personal channels online and tagging the startup, tagging, right? So it's like ping ponging traffic. From, per, from Elon Musk back to Tesla, from Tesla back to Elon Musk. It's a ping pong of traffic, a ping pong of content, a ping pong of brand awareness, a ping pong of engagement. It really is building out the ecosystem behind your branding efforts today. You know, think of branding and marketing as an ecosystem and the corporation or the company and the person the, 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 the thought leader are both essential pieces within the ecosystem that, that really ping and pong traffic back and forth, making it bigger, more effective, more, more trust, more engagement, more growth, more revenue, bottom line. Chelsea, you know, I learned so much from this conversation. Please, Chelsea, would you care to share with our, our listeners uh, where they can find you, where they can see your work? I, I know you're heavily on LinkedIn, so, so please invite yeah. everyone. 
Well, uh, of course, I uh, do have a, a top um, 12 global course on LinkedIn learning. It is uh, loaded with all of this information, I promise you, that we have just covered in step-by-step how-to tutorial videos, talking about how to deliver content in a format that's tangible, that's bite-sized, that's I will walk you through the process of how to build your thought leadership, your personal brand identity. On LinkedIn Learning, if you type in Chelsea Crossed or if you type in personal branding, you will find my learning personal branding course. It's available right now on LinkedIn. One of the reasons why I love working with LinkedIn is because they make it so available to get quality content like this. If you're a LinkedIn Premium member, so if you have LinkedIn Premium, you already get LinkedIn Learning for free, which is great. If you're not a LinkedIn Premium member, no problem. You can buy any of the courses on LinkedIn Learning or my LinkedIn Learning um, Learning Personal Branding course on online a la carte, and it's less than $20. So you're getting so much information and so much, I, I, it, it's really, you can look at it as your personal branding university. Right. right. If you don't do anything but watch this course and practice the, the steps within this course, you are on your way to personal branding growth, right? And establishing your personal brand and for less than $20. So it's a really, to me, the great bang for your buck. Um, you can even try out LinkedIn Premium for free for 30 days. They make it very doable and accessible, you know, to get this quality content. You will not, you will not be sorry. You will not, you can look at all the reviews and how many people who have viewed it. I think we're almost at 3 million people who have completed the learning personal branding course. Wow. Yes. Oh. So That's exciting. Fun. Um, and we, we hit top 12 in 2020 global course. Um, so that, that's a real indicator how top of mind personal branding is today, right? And then be on the lookout in 2021, if not early 2022, I think it should be early 2021. But if you, if you follow me, I will, off, I will of course keep you posted on the timeline um, where we, I will be rolling out my next course, which is all about um, building and keeping positive brand reputation. So, you know, really in conjunction to personal branding, uh, brand reputation can make or break your success right today. So um, all of, and then I have a marketing to millennials course, a influencer marketing course, and a how to work smarter, not harder course all available on LinkedIn right now. So lots of great information if you're hungry for um, digital, social media, personal branding, and marketing success. That's perfect. Chelsea, uh, we're 12 hours apart. It's now 10.05 uh, p.m. It's 10.05 a.m. Uh, where you are now. And um, I know we're keeping you from your, your baby. So <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for getting on this conversation. And um, we wish you luck. Most importantly, we wish you luck on uh, your new baby because I, I know how it feels. And it it's a lot. Get, it get better and worse. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, and thank you. It was such a pleasure speaking with you this morning this, and this evening. Thank you. Bye bye. This episode is brought to you by Techno Gym. We've partnered with Techno Gym for equipment recommendations for your home gym. So if you're looking for gear that will help you elevate your home gym experience to the next level, just go to technogym.com and type the Methods to Greatness promo code MTG. That's MTG. And we'll hook you up with the best premium home gym equipment in the market today. If you would like me to interview anyone on the face of the earth and want them on the podcast, or if you want to collaborate with us for future content or sponsorship opportunities, or if you just have any recommendations on how we can get better, just send us an email at john at methodstogreatness.com. That's John at methods to greatness.com. Until then, we'll see you next time.